Our report this week uh, covers a number of items, uh, and the first one I just want to talk uh, briefly is something uh, that we've all been exposed to over the past uh, month or so is the, uh, the coronavirus or COVID-19, and uh, as school districts uh, take on the, the unfolding stories, if you will, as to how it potentially affects uh, public entities, public school, open spaces where people gather, uh, school districts are not immune uh, to, the, to the potential. And what we've been doing um, over the past several weeks is continuous conversations, not only with staff internally, but as well in continuous conversation with local county, state, federal health officials that have been getting us guidance and oversight as to what, expect, what to expect. Um, as you know, the, the risk factor right now in the state of Wisconsin is as low. Um, news media itself um, sheds a different light around the world, which often um, puts a person in a state of mind of, as to what is next. And then I think as a district, it's always good to be forward thinking in that regard as to what could be next. Um, and just to reassure the district that our practices haven't changed in the sense of maintaining health and cleaning, uh, health and clean uh, learning environments for our student and staff. Daily cleaning is ongoing. A um, little extra attention to surfaces um, are, are being addressed on a daily basis as well. And that communication uh, piece where we talked about, you know, what is good, um, you know, flu health hygiene that all of us can partake in, you know, the continued hand washing. You know, if you are ill, this thing home, being knowledgeable of it, uh, talking with your children about what this means as, a, as an individual and as a family, um, looking and listening to stories and uh, putting things into perspective from a, from a child's view versus an adult's view. And uh, so as a district, we're working hard to uh, give additional resources out that families can utilize if deemed appropriate um, to share within their, um, within their home. Uh, by every means, we have uh, daily check-ins with our county health agent, uh, Jed Wolt, and he is sharing our lead nurse, uh, Sue Resch, with information as appropriate, and as well as continually compiling our local statistics as far as health within our district, primarily the different strands of flu that we're all used to seeing right here, which is the bigger threat right now locally and in within the state of Wisconsin. So if you hear questions or comments, you know, based on the um, the COVID-19 and what it means locally uh, as a district. We're, we're in tune, we're following recommendations from the CDC as well as county, state, and federal health officials. And uh, I guess my parting advice would be if a student or individual is not feeling well or sick, um, use good judgment and, and stay home until the, you are feeling better within that. Any questions? The next piece was on motivating children. You know, through the years there's been several items that I've shared with uh, stakeholders, we talk about what motivates children's success is often based on the motivation piece what all of us put forward to achieve. And uh, there are certain elements that you know, are the, the standby which, which foster success at a higher rate. And uh, the noted items which uh, come out is uh, looking at you know, a person that is able to you know, the show interest in working with individuals when they are part of uh, an experience and letting them know that their, their motivation, your motivation, are, are utilized as one. Um, encouraging the problem solving techniques which all of us have learned through trial and error as well, some more successful than others in the sense of what problem solving might be. You know, provide choices with our, with our students and families to see um, what motivation will be and then ultimately accepting mistakes that we know that we fail more than we succeed. So motivation is something that instantly is not developed. It often occurs over time. And when you find yourself in positions of applying the various uh, management techniques to improve the motivation, you know, successful outcomes, positive outcomes will be found. The last piece I'd like to talk about is our B212 extra degree of effort to the district. Uh, I'd like to recognize a district employee of our intermediate middle schools in Shaw. Recently, Lynn participated in our Spring Into Success Conference sponsored by CESA 6. Um, and at that conference, we had uh, 3,500 um, individuals um, throughout the CESA area that partook in breakout sessions. And Lynn chose to share her expertise in the math curriculum and focus to bring peers of her um, math uh, domain up and share what she's doing locally within our school district. So thank you, Mrs. Shaw, for taking the B2 challenge, B212 challenge to lead within. Any questions? Mr. Markward. Good evening, everyone. Three quick items. The first is 
that scholarship I talked about last month from the disabled uh, citizens, we received a additional thousand dollars so if any of you know any of those names that are mentioned there please reach out to thank them as well we have on our own but some of you also have community connections as well and if any of you know them that's obviously a great benefit to our future students who graduate to the agricultural emphasis the second thing is last week was school breakfast week uh, there's we have a small participation across the district about 13% of our students eat breakfast uh, every day. That's the norm for a long time. Um, but if any of you know any children that are looking for meals, that know that that is an option you know, at our schools. And then thirdly, just before our board meeting tonight, we had a total compensation meeting with Mr. Black and uh, Tina and Pete and John were there, really kind of setting the stage for our compensation goals and discussions for the next budget year. We talked about uh, CPI, Consumer Price Index, and how it would relate to wage increases. We also talked about our 403B program and potential enhancements, and also our supplemental wage budget. Uh, we will continue to discuss that at another meeting as well, bringing recommendations to the full board over one meeting where we make a preliminary presentation and then look for feedback and then take back for further discussion for a full recommendation at that next meeting to then have the board uh, potentially approve uh, contracts and wages for the next year for issuing of contracts to our staff. Any questions at all? Thank you. Um, the first item I want to talk about is our upcoming March 20th in-service. That is an in-service day that the entire staff, the support staff, and the professional staff will be attending. The whole day is focused on mental health and safety issues. So a couple of the big items that we have coming in, we have the Five Stones organization coming in to do a human trafficking education presentation for our staff. We also have Hidden in Plain Sight coming in and they do a simulated teenager's bedroom so we can see some of the places and locations and devices that they're using to hide um, their alcohol and drug abuse. So that will be um, informative for our staff. We have suicide prevention training happening that day, adolescent mental health training. We are rerunning Stop the Bleed because some of our staff were not able to participate in that the first time around. Um, and then we have various law enforcement agencies coming in to give us various um, safety topics as far as what they're seeing as far as trends and dangers. So that will take place at the high school on Friday, March 20th, and that will be the entire district staff. The second item I have on here, oh, it's like counseling resources. Tina, you had asked about this a while back, so I thought I would put it in a board report. Jill Wilner has been doing a lot of work to update our website as far as the different counseling connections and links on our website. Um, so that families can find those tabs and resources a little bit easier. But just for the purpose of everybody understanding, we have several memorandums of understanding signed with various counseling agencies, and they actually come in on site and um, set up and borrow some of our office space to work with our families and our students that aren't able, for whatever reason, to get to these locations. So. Um, the agencies are listed here. Um, the newest one that we added this year was Sherman Counseling, which is able to offer neuropsych evaluations, and in the past we hadn't had that resources. Rawhide has been involved with us for many years, Samaritan, um, Open Trails Counseling, and some of the others that you see on this list. Our pupil service team meets once a month to update the processes with this and make sure that we know of all the connections and to make sure that our counseling staff and our school psychology staff is informed of this so that when families come in requesting assistance for their family or for their student, um, our staff is informed as far as um, these resources available for the family. So Tina, you had asked about that and I just wanted to make sure that the entire board was updated on what's happening behind the scenes with the mental health resources. And I can take the uh, Director of Teaching Learning, Daniel Cephas, on with us this evening. Uh, three items to comment on the Wisconsin Board exam window has been identified. Uh, this is an annual assessment which our district is very much familiar with in students in grades 3 through 8 and 10. 
Uh, it's the annual assessment where our district gets benchmarked uh, amongst ourselves as far as the growth capacity as to how we're performing academically within our district. Um, ultimately, we would like the best effort and participation of all students and, and families to take the assessment um, and, and be uh, ready and willing to go, if you will, with, with that so that the end results are the best factors in which uh, are display what the district truly has of the student abilities. Next item is the Dr. Seuss on the Loose is an event which took place on February 28th. And a thank you to Kristen Grable and the 4K team, as well as many others that supported the event at the Washington Center on that day. Our current 4K students, as well as uh, future 4K students, were invited into a series of fun activities, but more importantly, as well, for the district to get an opportunity to meet families, uh, integrate them into some of our student services and support services what the district has to offer and uh, create a pathway um, to utilize our, our district as appropriate as they grow into school-age children. Uh, special thanks to um, all the volunteers, but specifically to our ISMS Student Council and the students from Catalyst, which were part of Set Up Takedown and activities within and did a tremendous job. And then lastly, the post-secondary fair uh, coming up on the uh, level that I mentioned earlier. Uh, just uh, a narrative again, I misspoke, it's 8.30 to 11.30. So uh, all are welcome to open our early. Any questions? <coughs> we'll move along to vouchers and receipts. Mr. Markworth. Yes, vouchers. I have four to highlight for the month. The first is for Firefly Computers. That is uh, for the purchase of 400 Chromebooks for next year's uh, ninth graders and then fifth graders, along with the, the Chrome Care Monitoring uh, component that we have for those programs. We also have a half 50% uh, pay, pay down for the lighting controls and <coughs> occupancy sensors both interior and exterior that the board approved at the last board meeting to be in H lighting for Parkview and Reedfield project. The third one was one that I didn't know so I had to look up and figure out if that's not a normal one. Maybe the board might ask a question on that as well. Kaylee Enterprises is for the high school baseball trip that is going to Florida. The district doesn't pay for those funds, but we pay out the funds, and then the high school baseball club uh, reimburses from the activity fund. And then the fourth is Otis Elevator. That was the second half of that power unit that we had to replace at the high school near the that took up to the second floor uh, to the fitness center. We paid half when, uh, in January, and now we're finishing the second half because it's paid, the work is done. <coughs> and then for receipts for the month, you can see that we got some more property taxes, so year to date, we have 71% of the budget total there. Any questions? If there are no questions, we'll look for a motion to approve expenditures in the amount of $1,206,335.29 as per the list of March 4th, 2020. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. By John, second by Pete. Roll call, please. <coughs> Pete Vasquez? Yes. Mark Grossman? Yes. John Heidemann? Yes. Connie Neely? Yes. Tina Rockdashel? Yes. Kim Schrader? Yes. Terry Wagner? Yes. Also like to note record receipts from the receipt register of March 4th, 2020 in the amount of $2,810,620.64. Is Moving on to new business this evening. Parent outreach opportunities. Board members, we have a, a familiar face from a month or two ago. Uh, Mrs. Alicia Korth is with us. It's going to share some information on project work that's uh, currently taking place at Lincoln Elementary with uh, the focus of parent outreach. Thank you very much. So tonight I wanted to come back and kind of give you an update of a project that we've been working on at Lincoln Elementary, just like Mr. Black had said. Um, at the beginning of the school year, I actually reached out to Mr. Delwich and said I wanted to kind of get an activity going that we could outreach to our community in Lincoln. And he had said that he was looking at actually having a scrolling presentation um, outside our gym foyer so that way when the families are coming in waiting for picking up their students at the end of the day 
what would happen across the ticker is really a presentation of what's going on at Lincoln Elementary. And from there, I was like, can I take that on? So he graciously gave me a little bit of the reins to kind of create that presentation and then also um, charged me to work with um, Tony Teklin at Lincoln Elementary also in purchasing and then mounting that, that TV in the gym foyer. And so what I want to present with you tonight is actually the one example of the presentation that we have. So this actually began in the month of December is when we got the TV up, it got mounted and everything, and we started scrolling. So each month, as long as it will start working, just got to think. Each month what you can see is it starts out right away with Lincoln Elementary. And from there it will then tell what is happening within that month. It highlights character assemblies, anything that is going on such as literacy night, if there's no school, when PTO meetings are, just to give a little bit more information to our families that are coming into Lincoln Elementary every day. Then from there, as you can see, we got to showcase this month our literacy night that took place at Lincoln, and it also kind of sh showcased the theme and activities that our families could be involved in. Also, with the forward exam coming up, it also highlights some test-taking tips that parents or family members or even our students can read each day and <coughs> take them home and think about, okay, how can I really get ready for being successful in this upcoming forward exam? As well, we talk about our character pillar that happens every month. There's student council news, such as the gum day that is coming up as well as our Bulldogs of Character. So each month there is a different Bulldogs of Character pillar that we really highlight, and then also things that are happening in our community. As you can see there, how we took this then one step further into the New London Public Library with Percy and reading with them. And the school store is, of course, coming back to Lincoln Elementary, so we wanted to highlight it, that as well. So this is just some examples of the scrolling ticker that continues to go out in the gym foyer. What I would like to do then as we continue forward is I wanted to actually try this out at Lincoln Elementary to see how successful it was, how can we outreach, how can we continue to grow it. My hope is then moving forward into next year is actually getting this to the other elementary school buildings. We have kind of um, looked at pricing different TVs, what it would be to install, and then also just getting those presentations up and running and where the local of those um, TVs would be mounted. But with some of the renovations that was kind of sidetracked for this year, we felt that it would be best to just kind of wait. So our hope is then to continue in getting this into all four elementary buildings for next year, so that way we can reach all of our families across the district. Any questions in, in regards to what we're kind of doing in the parent outreach? So have you thought how to measure its impact? Yes. So I did send out a survey a couple of weeks ago on our class dojo. Unfortunately, I did not get much response. I got one teacher that um, has children in our district that did respond, and then I had one other parent. So our hopes are, as the year continues, I would like to actually reach out and try to get a little bit more parent response. Um, the class dojo I thought would be a way that we could kind of monitor that so that way I could bring that tonight. Unfortunately, the responses on that weren't as successful as I was hoping. So going forward, that is kind of something that I'm looking at to continue with for the rest of the year just to monitor that and moving forward. Maybe you could put a trivia question up on your slide. That and is then if they, if they uh, give the right answer, they can win like a... Ten dollar gift card from somewhere. Yeah, that's you a know, great idea. You know, and it's something that the yeah. parents. It would be a trivia question for the parents. Yep. You know. No, I love that suggestion. No, I'll take anything I can use. So. I think anything, calling on marks, anything that you can get them to make a commitment to do something that you can then track yep. and get some feedback. Uh, to his point, maybe it's a gift card, maybe it's $5 at the student store yep. or something yep. like that if the parents enter them. So they have to see it, put something there that says you have to enter this code or some way to get them to let you know they've seen it. Exactly. And uh, then you can have a chance to see what they're thinking about the value of it. But 
it, it looks very nice. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. It's I think this is spot too for it. My thoughts are bigger than what this is. I mean, that was that's awesome and it's a, and it's great. But we also saw a PTO up there, and it's, it it would be nice if the board um, would hear at some point what is our what do our PTOs do? What do we what does parent outreach mean? What is our our goal in all this? Do we have you know? Parent advisory groups. I mean, we have a policy, and I looked it up quick. You know me and my policies, eight eleven point one, and that that says how that we have to have parents involved. <coughs> and I guess I've never, I don't hear much about it. So mm -hmm. if we can start looking about it and talking about it, I think it it help to move forward because oftentimes we've heard that the schools get too much, and you know we want parents to be more involved. How we ask them to be involved how do we do that I don't I don't know if there perhaps you guys do things that I don't know about so in the future so when do you post this typically this is March so when would it have gone up it goes up the first day of the month so okay. as soon as the month rolls over whatever that is on that first Monday or whatever day of the week okay. that's exactly when this is ready to go out and then, of course, if there's something that kind of is upcoming, that like parent-teacher conferences, we like to kind of advertise that a little bit earlier. Literacy Night actually came up on in February already, trying to just get that word out so that way the parents knew the date, they knew the times, they just didn't know the theme, to kind of hook them in there a little bit so that way we could just get them to wanting to be interested about it. Did you get a good parent turnout, like more than normal? It was very steady at our liter literacy night. Um, it does depend sometimes on the weather, of mm -hmm. course, but with the weather being really successful that night and not being, you know, um, hard traveling weather, we did have a steady crowd, and we actually had parents there until 6 o'clock when we were like, oh, literacy night's done. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Take the rockets home. <laughs> so. Or even having them sign in. Hey, did you see this on the school newsletter? On the this? Where did yep. you see us advertise it? So yep. you could get some information. No, those are all great suggestions. So <coughs> I will take them back, and maybe you'll see me again soon. All right, thank you. Thank you, Felicia. Review and approval of asbestos abatement. Okay. Okay. We'll take us through a discussion on asbestos upcoming. Uh, there are asbestos-containing materials at Parkview and Reedfield that be disturbed summer projects that the board approved at their February meeting. So last fall, in order to evaluate what was there and what uh, could be abated, we had EMC, which stands for Environmental Management Consulting, which has been the district's partner for several years, to survey <coughs> all of our schools. They do indoor air testing. They keep track of the uh, asbestos-containing materials that we have. They review our science labs, or fume woods, etc. They are very common entity that school districts use across the state to compile our asbestos containing materials. So they tested samples of uh, areas at the schools that are from the era that could contain asbestos and then sent us back a report. From that report that we received in, in the fall, there were a lot of areas that uh, contained asbestos. I wasn't sure exactly what the board was going to approved for the project yet because we didn't have the bids and yet knowing the full scope of that cost. So after February I was able to then determine what um, the budget for that project was, then review the bids for the asbestos uh, contractors, then come forward tonight for a recommendation. When we first started the abatement um, budget, we were given an estimate of about $100,000 to abate the uh, known asbestos building or contents at those two buildings. So from there, we knew that um, the project was going to come under budget with, with the bids that were received. From there, our task was to put together the phasing of the removal at those buildings because there was not enough um, time to do it over spring break and plus or excuse me uh, Christmas break as I mentioned I wasn't sure what the board was going to approve for the project yet 
but spring break was an option. And with doing that, it gives a little bit of time to start um, abating uh, some of the rooms in those schools. And when we talked to Bolt about that, they were very, very happy that we were going to have some of the work begin over that spring break time because um, when we kind of said, well, could we wait till the summer to do that? Uh, the project uh, manager kind of looked at Scott and I at the pre-construction meeting and I could tell that was a no. So we knew we needed to, de to develop a good plan to start at this process as, as soon as practical to begin abating the areas that were going to be remodeled during the work. So with that, it was developed into three phases. The first would be classroom flooring at uh, two of the schools over spring break, six rooms at Parkview and five rooms at Reedfield. Uh, Mr. Black and I went to Parkview a couple weeks ago to their staff meeting to share with them the areas that would be impacted, um, some of the challenges that um, would happen with that. We're going to end school on a day and then remove items from their classroom uh, yet that afternoon and finish up the next morning and then uh, if approved the, the abatement contractor will come in and remove the asbestos in those rooms and then we'll do the air testing and the DNR will certify that and then we can move the things back in on Monday. And we'll be able to go down to uh, Wheatfield next week I believe and share a similar sentiment with that staff. At Parkview it was a little more, it's a little more complicated because it's six direct instruction classrooms. Uh, now we're at Reedfield. Um, there's only one of the rooms that has uh, regular <coughs> instruction all day long every day there where some of the other rooms are, are in similar rooms down there. So we know that that is one of the challenges with the first phase. The second phase in talking to, to Bull, they said yes. If you get as much as you can done in that first phase, we can work around those other wings that have asbestos during that first three or four days. Because that's about the time that it takes. You do the mobilization, seal off that area, put in the proper ventilation, give the proper notices, and then have it air tested and done to make sure that everything is set up appropriately. And then the third phase, we were able to, to confirm with Bolt that we could do the window and door glazing and caulking as those replacements arrive. So if you remember last year at the middle school, uh, when we tested the glazing there, that also had asbestos. We timed it where the abatement company took out the, the windows and put in the replacements there so you don't have a lot of time um, between when the old is out and the new is in. Um, we worked with EMC to really try to make sure that the costs were as low as possible. We knew that asbestos um, is expensive to remove. We've seen that from other projects. So with the bids that we received, we're um, supporting our recommendation tonight to the, to the board for approval. And with that, I'll take any questions any of you have. I, have. I just had two questions. One, when you take that out over spring break, that flooring, is there no flooring there then? or Correct. Okay, and you don't think that'll affect the air quality or anything? I mean, I don't know how that all gets cleaned up. So. Yes, yeah, so they their job is to make sure that they clean everything out, and then they have to do the air test to make <coughs> sure there's no remaining remnants, if you will, of asbestos. And then from for the rest of the year, there will be um, concrete floors there that the staff can use their day rugs that they have there now. If there's something we need to do to help help them have something the rest of the year, we can, can do that as well. And a dirty ducks environmental, have we used them before? We have not. But the contractors are vetted through EMC and their contractors okay. that are used. You know, it's just it's they invited and they had a walk through saying and then they had um, a mandatory bid walkthrough, and that's a company that had the lowest bid. So I asked uh, Jason, who's from EMC, if do they do good work? Are we can we rely on them? Are we going to be happy with them? And, and they said yes. And there's a contract that they develop as well to ensure that they are doing the work appropriately as well. I didn't include that contract in there. It's about you know, 60 
pages per school of all the submittals that they have to do and who keeps track of the paperwork and you know, that, that job. This originally wasn't a wasn't a, a, a high priority in our in our studies or in or in the others, but either way the flooring has to come out in order to lay in the new floor hand correctly because of the other parts that are coming out. Yes. I'm still understanding that correctly. Yes, with the new flooring going in, that's what will happen. But then there's also some, uh, like for the bathrooms at Parkview, those tiles that are in the current bathroom have asbestos-containing mastic on it. Those were tested, so that is why that would have had to be done as well. And some of the, the current frames that are there as well that are being replaced, the caulk around those edges also has um, asbestos-containing materials. In the tunnels at Reedfield as well, there's still some old um, covering, if you will, around the elbows that has asbestos on there as well. So as we talked as, a, as an administrative team, we just felt like, you know, if we're going to be there doing that work, it makes sense to do it now and remove all of the known uh, asbestos containing areas. Just for... Go ahead. I was going to say, is there a contingency plan for Parkview in case they don't, they can't for some reason get the work done in time during the during spring break if they need an extra day for any number of reasons? What do you do? What do you do with the with with the, with, with the kids and the, the, the staff? They will get it done because they will be able to start on Wednesday, and we also will have school on Monday the next week. So they'll be able to finish, do their testing, send it to us appropriately. And then on Monday, we plan on putting the items back into the room. So then Tuesday, when our staff <coughs> arrives, they can you know, take care of the remaining work that they want to do. And uh, Jody Peterson is already coming up with some ideas to maybe give the staff some time you know, during that morning to um, deal with the disruption. You know, we know that it's not the most ideal scenario to do it over spring break. It also was the most economical to do it this way as well because as you do it that first week of June, that's when every school wants it done. So there's upcharging, if you will, because of the supply and demand of when the work is needed. So I think that the good news to this is is we continue to try to be as responsible with our budget as we can. and. Hopefully it's not a decision that um, will backfire. Mr. Goldsman, just from the meeting that we had, uh, Joe and I were at Parkview, uh, Jody's working with her staff to potentially have some teaming of grade levels that first day they come back so that uh, kids can work with other grade levels for various reasons to free up the teacher time, which Joe had mentioned to put the final touches. Our staff will work diligently to get the, the desks and the tables and all items back in, but there will be an element of personal belongings that will need to be um, uh, set up to their liking as well. So we will do that just to uh, make it as seamless as we can. But, uh, thank you to all of our staff that are participating within that. I know Joe and I, we've uh, identified some, some boxes or whatnot to help assist staff uh, load their materials and belongings in advance of so that they can feel comfortable um, preparing their rooms for that as much as possible with our custodial staff. I guess to answer some some community um, questions, um, either way we had to take the tile out in order to redo the tile. Yes. So by all standards it probably would have cost us half to two-thirds as much just to remove it even if it wasn't asbestos containing. It's a tile that just happens to have asbestos in it. And I believe they remove it the same way. They just take more precautions as far as the people that are doing the work. So. Okay. And as of today, everything is contained. This is just moving forward with our new project and saying this should come out while <coughs> our buildings are being redone. And the fact that some of it needs to, as we take those rooms apart, we will have to remove those tiles. So no one's in an asbestos environment today that's not contained. Yes, we have annual testing at all of our schools that has to document that, report that, so you know, it, it's something that it's just, it's contained materials exactly as Terry said. 
Any other questions? Do you want this as separate motions or do we put them together? I think you can put them together, but I would do a roll call. Absolutely. So if there are no other questions, we'll look for a motion to approve Dirty Ducks Environmental Incorporated to complete the asbestos abatement project at Reedfield Elementary and at Parkfield Elementary as presented. Is there a motion? I'll so make that motion. Second it. Was that Pete? Yeah, I think so. It just sounds like such a cool name. Sounds like it was a battle here. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Mark Grossman? Yes. John Heideman? Yes. Connie Neely? Yes. Tina Rockdashel? Yes. Tim Schrader? Yes. Pete Boscos? Yes. Terry Wagner? Yes. <coughs> Thank you, Joe. Um, food service program update. I think we got project. Oh, Park. Oh, sorry about that. No, not a problem. So an update on Reedfield and Parkville <coughs> Elementary remodeling. Okay, so there's uh, many of the items uh, have been touched uh, through Mr. Marquardt and the, re and the report on the uh, prepping for the asbestos abatement, which will be taking place over our spring break uh, time frame. Additional items which have taken place since we've gathered as a board on February 20th. Uh, the Somerville team brought together the vendor contractors, which we'll be working with collaboratively on both products or projects for a pre-construction meeting, uh, opportunity for the district and the contractors to familiarize themselves with each other as, as well uh, take instruction direction from Somerville as the anticipated project timelines and processes as we enter in the construction um, phase. Uh, again, the anticipated construction time was verified again with the April 1 um, uh, time frame uh, for the new uh, foundation and footings for new spaces at Parkfield Elementary and uh, we look forward to that the weather cooperating doing its job today and hopefully it'll be a nice slow easy spring until April 1 uh, items that still need to take place that are ongoing that will um, realistically be completed by uh, the, the end of the month here in the next week or two is the the site location and prep as we talk about what that'll look like as uh, far as fencing, job site trailers, lay down spaces for equipment and um, supplies as they prepare to start with that first phase of construction. Uh, bulk construction will lead that discussion based on uh, best spaces and then most definitely our communication plan with the community as well. As we anticipate that area will be, a, it's already a high traffic space uh, twice a day with students uh, arriving and and going home at the end of the day, uh, the curiosity factor will also be increased for our community as they see things change around the landscape of Parkview Elementary. So we need to ensure the spaces are prepped and ready for additional uh, site and foot traffic, which may be around that space. Um, next, uh, coordination with Bolton Somerville of um, a project uh, to kick off the, uh, the program. Uh, email sent to Melanie Parma this morning. Uh, some ideas that we're looking at uh, um, to start, whether it's a construction kickoff or um, a, a grand opening, you will, if the uh, for the construction that'll take place. We anticipate having a, a community student event, which will welcome the school community in to be part of that um, accomplishment as we break ground on our project work. And lastly, uh, reference to um, uh, the financing of this upcoming project with uh, potential anticipated. Um, board approval at the March 23rd meeting on the, the bonding of funds to support the project. Joe, can you uh, share us in with this, uh, the perspective with what Baird's been sharing with you thus far? Yes, we're looking at uh, bonding, making a recommendation to the board to bond for about $3 million. The $3 million would then <coughs> go towards paying the um, project cost the interest rates would, and then we pay that back over the next three years. The funds to pay for that come from the referendum budget, as well as our operational budget to pay for the costs of that project. And we can identify that in more specifics once we get the rates at the next meeting and look for the board to you know, have discussion and uh, questions with that part of the process. Are there any questions that you would like to see when we have that information next week or next meeting? I guess I'd like to understand, I mean, rates are beginning to fall. Will there 
you know, what's the potential savings we'll have with this taking place? I mean, it's not anything we planned, but obviously we should be able to secure some savings in, in interest over those three years based on just rate drop over the last 30 days. And who knows, in another month it may still be lower. I think an easy comparison would be uh, just an annual reflection back one year when we started and right. with uh, the process of uh, what it would have been to, to where it is now and ultimately Barrett will guide us on that opportune time. Uh, we are hearing the voice that now is a good time to, to uh, take out the bond and uh, if something does change between now and then uh, we will keep the board abreast of what that might mean. So, so going back to our start date. Uh, is April 1 actually the beginning of, of that project? For the, the exterior new square footage. So we will be blocking off a large portion, I assume, of the site along Jennings Street, correct? Correct. That hasn't been finalized by both, but yes, the intent is to create a map of uh, the, the, the chain connective fence that will secure in that initial space. That might uh, initially expand once the school year is over with to capture more space for workspaces. Um, but initially, yes, there'll be a significant uh, space along that <laughs> south side of the building going east that will be fenced in for construction. Uh, during, during the walkthrough, did they have any concerns with the statue there? Did they voice any concerns? They, they did. Uh, it appears that that space uh, where the current statue is present uh, we'll have to come up with a plan to move that uh, just to the locality of where it is and what they anticipate for needed uh, supplies, equipment, and uh, just uh, ultimately a risk as well, you know, being in a construction right. zone. Right. Uh, so we're, we're actively working on, a, on an idea or concept to approach to see where that might go, if you will, but it, it does look like that'll have to be moved from that space. Okay. other questions? Thank you, Mr. Markworth. Things are getting moving along pretty quickly. Um, now we'll go to the food service program. So, so food service is presented uh, as an, an update. Uh, I know our district uh, went to a new transition of food service providers from Tahar to Chartwells this year and we felt it was be important to, to just give a, an overview of where we are thus far. Uh, much of this is an experience based um, thus far into the year, the, the annual numbers which will be shared as we close out the fiscal year towards the end of June will be the true reflection of it, but we felt it was important to give some feedback as to how our current staff, our stu uh, students and uh, school community are, are working with our new food service program. Yep. Okay, well in short, we're very happy with the change. I think that we are um, getting a better product for our students. <coughs> our students appear to be happier and our um, regular meetings that we have with Chartwells are very uh, beneficial in my mind. Uh, Travis, who is our on-site director, meets with me on a monthly basis, and if available, the regional director will come with as well to kind of get a status quo where things are at with the school district. <coughs> uh, as if we're looking for numbers. Lunch counts are up year to date by 20 students at the high school and middle school together, so 20 each at each building and down 15 per day at the elementary schools. That makes sense though, because we have 50 fewer students at the school. So even though we're down in counts, we're not down 50 total from the numbers. From what the board approved uh, last summer for the financials, there's a contract of a guaranteed profit of $59,299. So that, regardless of what happens, in the budget unless we wouldn't have school the rest of the year, which would be an outlying factor. The budget that uh, Chartwells has is a guarantee um, in their contractual language is uh, the $59,000 amount. So that's what the, the board considered last year when you have to vote 
That's also what USD requires to be your number one factor when scoring the food service management companies to ensure that um, profitability or revenue, net revenue, is, is considered. Below that, you can see what I took from Travis. Travis is, as I mentioned, our on-site director. I asked him to give a narrative of what's going on with each building. So I know all of you can read, so I don't need to read them to you. He's really showing what he sees is going well at each school and what um, they look at from his perspective. He's on the second side of the page. You can see some things that he would like to uh, improve. But more importantly, I'd also want to ask any of our principals to interject, you know, anything as well that, you know, they have seen, you know, in their buildings, because they also have that day-to-day firsthand experience with their children. So, so if any of you have anything to put you on the spot. I will say at the intermediate middle school, students are really enjoying the hot lunch program a lot more. There's a lot more fresh choices for kids that um, they are really appreciating week by week. Um, in fact, they actually get excited when they see something new on the menu because it's not the same recycled menu week after week mm -hmm. after week. And um, overall, Chartwells and Travis have been very responsive for any events that we've catered through them, as well as undertaking with forward exam testing on the horizon. We always provide a light breakfast snack for all of our kids since all grade levels test and he's been very accommodating and in fact tomorrow morning bright and early he and i will be meeting to see you know what's the best arrangement after we serve breakfast for our students to see how we can get all of our kids into that tight space and then also run a testing schedule on the days that we're scheduled to test so it's been very positive at the intermediate middle school level i can speak as a parent sorry to interrupt but um I would say my second grader last year was one or two days that she's on a hot lunch, and now she just takes hot lunch, and it's so much more convenient. And I would say the salad bar, Kirk, I don't know if you can expound on this, but um, it's more, it's still healthy choices, but more familiar food for kids. Um, there was a lot of interesting things that kids just didn't want to take in years past, so. I think the appearance and presentation of not only the salad bar, but all the food is uh, much improved. And as you know, first impressions are a big deal for kids. And so that goes a long way in them uh, deciding whether to eat hot lunch. And if they didn't take hot lunch that day, they sure will the next time that offering appears on the menu. So. I know that uh, some of the, the staff at the elementary schools have expressed the, a lot more demands that they have on them for the work, but I look at that also as a positive when I read Travis's notes um, where if all the hot food was sent in warming boxes last year and now this year it's cooked on site, it's just a different way to, to eat that's better for students. It puts a little bit more pressure on that on those staff members that are there but it's providing a better product for our students. So I'm, I'm glad that uh, Charwells has that option available you know, in our food service program. I, I have the opportunity, I don't know why, but just within the last uh, six weeks or so, I've talked to three different uh, Chartwell staff, and they would have been staff with Tucker as well. And they said they're enjoying this so much more too and they they appreciate the kids are happier coming to get food from them too so they, they seem to be pleased that's good so I don't know if any of you have any feedback as well no I, I you know just looking at the menus on NL connect you can go and see what the menus are in my school it's really great day by day and it, it appears like the variety and the amount of choices offered every day have definitely gone up. I mean, there's there's something for almost anybody who wants to have breakfast or wants to have lunch, and I think a really nice selection of items for them. Any other thoughts? Thank you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs>